Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. In today's video, I'm going to disclose that I bought $50,000 of a specific asset and I wanna take you through the steps and also my thought process of why I did that. Uh, so let's get right into it. So spoiler alert, uh, spoiler alert <laughs> I just bought $50,000 worth of T-bills and I'll give you five reasons why. So I know this isn't the most exciting thing in the world, uh, but I promise you, uh, for a lot of you, it may actually behoove you to do this. So this is a, a screenshot from my Twitter uh, saying that I bought $50,000 worth of T-bills. As you can see down here, this was purchased on January 18th, 2023. Uh, so you can see right here, uh, purchase was requested. Uh, I believe it went through yesterday. Um, for $50,000, uh, source of funds, et cetera, et cetera. So why did I do this? But before we get into that, you need to understand the three types of treasury securities to begin with. Uh, so you have what we call T-bills, which have a duration of one year or less or maturity of one year or less. Uh, you have notes, which can last two, three, five, seven, and 10 years. And then you also have treasury bonds. Treasury bonds are typically 20 years or more um, specifically 20 or 30. So here's the first reason why I bought $50,000 worth of T-bills. So number one is that right now they have a high historic yield, okay? So uh, right here is just a, at the time of this recording, this is a screenshot of all the U.S. Treasuries and what they're yielding. So on the left-hand side, you have the maturity date. So you can have one month all the way to 30 years, if that makes sense. And then over here, you can see basically the yield that this uh, asset is throwing off. And these are all done over a period of one year. So that way, you know, you're comparing apples to apples. So you're going to get, if you choose to buy a U.S. one-year T-bill uh, and you hold it to maturity, you're going to be earning 4.686% on this investment. Now, uh, if you hold, say, for example, a three-month bill to maturity, you're only going to be getting 25% of this because, remember, there's 12 months in a year. You're only holding it for three, okay, three, six, nine, twelve, twenty-five percent 25%. So you can see here that um, the number one reason why I'm investing right now is because there's an inverted yield curve, which I'll show you in the next slide. But you can see these longer durations are typically supposed to yield more than the lower durations because you're holding it for a longer period of time. However, you can see here that it's almost flipped. You can see that all of the um, one month, three month, four month, six month, one year, these are all yielding in the mid fours. And you can see all the ones that are basically three years to 30 years, they're all yielding in the mid to high threes. Okay, so that's a big reason for that. So let's take a look at this yield curve and what this means. So when short end yields rise above longer ones, like we saw in the previous slide, that is historically represented expectations for the Fed to raise the benchmark rate, okay, to raise interest rates enough to drag the economy into a recession. So if you look at these gray bars right here, uh, you can see whenever these numbers uh, spike up, we're basically headed into recession territory um, because you can see they dip right here, we enter a recession. They dip right here, we enter a recession. They dip right here, we enter a recession. So we're sitting right here at basically one of the uh, longest or one of the biggest discrepancies in yield curve in the last you know 30 or 40 years. Uh, you can see the difference is basically at negative 1.3 or so. And this is basically taking the 10-year treasury yield minus the three-month treasury yield, and you can see the difference here. So what this means is, is that if we enter a recession and all your stocks get crushed, I know that I will be doing number two, getting risk-free income, okay? So number one is that this is completely risk-free, uh, also known in finance circles as the risk-free rate. So basically the risk-free rate is a rate of return that is the interest rate an investor can expect to earn on an investment that carries zero risk. Why is that? Well, let's look at number two, because it's backed by the government, okay? So this isn't backed by, you know, uh, Lebanese currency, Argentinian currency that's inflating 100% this year, uh, Turkish currency that's almost at 100% inflation this year, the lira. Uh, this is backed by the U.S. dollar, okay? This is backed by oil, military, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So unlike corporate bonds, they are only as strong as the company issuing them. So the government is going to be perceived more strong than, you know, a random company issuing bonds. Uh, so much so that I decided to put this snippet in the video. You can see here from, I believe, CNBC is that U.S. companies face record $10.5 trillion in debt. And this is what we talk about, the corporate bond bubble. I've been talking about this on my channel for a year or two now. Uh, and then finally, they pay better than CDs and they're more flexible than CDs. CDs are just certificates of deposit. So let's talk about some of the tax benefits of these T-bills and why I decided to buy them. 
So interest earned on all U.S. Treasury securities, including T-bills, is exempt from taxation at the state and local level, but it's fully taxable at the federal level. So I, uh, I live in a suburb of Cleveland. I'm in Ohio. So we have state income tax. We have a lot of taxes here in Cuyahoga County. It's crazy. Um, but at least with this, you know that um, it's exempt from taxation at the state and local level, but you still will have to uh, get a 1099 INT at the end of the year, and that will be represented on your federal taxes or what you owe. So if you live in a state with high local taxes, T bills might be more advantageous than other short-term fixed instruments. And that is why I decided to invest in T bills. Uh, but before we get into the next section of number four, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, which is Masterworks. This is a completely different asset class, which I'll describe to you right now. This difficult year is not over. The debt ceiling standoff is still looming. You're here to try and protect your gains, but are you diversified enough to weather the storm? A Barclays study from the last year found that the markets haven't been in sync like this in over 15 years. That means it's more important than ever to open your eyes to new markets, or you could still be missing out on opportunities. If you're new to my channel, maybe you haven't heard of this market. It had a record setting year in 2022. Yes, really. It's fine art. So Deloitte experts expect its value as an asset class to grow to $2.6 trillion by 2026, and my subscribers already know how to get into the game with Masterworks. They enable you to invest in shares of contemporary art for thousands, not millions, uh, and some of you are already on board and just in time from the looks of it. In the past 12 months when 401ks and portfolios were getting vaporized, Masterworks investors realized nine positive returns. In their last three exits, they delivered 10%, 13% and 35% net returns to their investors. That's tens of millions of dollars in net returns in the worst year of returns in over a decade. So now the Wall Street Journal, CNN, and CNBC have also caught on. And with macro meltdowns possibly on the way, demand is still rising. Over 617,000 have signed up and offerings can sell out within minutes, but my subscribers can claim a free no obligation account today in the link in the description below. Okay, thank you for sitting through that. That allows me to make this content for free without charging you a penny for over five years of doing this now on YouTube. So let's get into number four. T-bills or any treasuries, they're very easy to buy, okay? So if you go to my video, I posted this about three, four months ago. It's basically a full tutorial on how to buy this either on Treasury Direct or um, through Charles Schwab, okay? So this will this will walk you through everything completely, uh, but let me show you that process right now just in a quick nutshell so you can get an idea of what it looks like. Okay, so this is me and my Treasury Direct account, okay? So you can see here that I purchased I-bonds. I bought 10 grand on January 3rd. I bought 10 grand on July 13th, but then down here, you can see on the 24th, or it's gonna actually uh, complete on the 24th, my $50,000 purchase of T-bills, okay? So if you're wondering what duration I bought, I bought the eight-week duration. Uh, this should land somewhere in the, I think, 4.6 or 4.7% return. Uh, but remember, you're, you're only getting a proportion of that annual yield based on the um, duration that you hold it. So if it's a one year and it's earning 4.7 at the end of one year, 52 weeks, you're going to earn 4.7. If it's eight weeks, you're only going to earn that proportion of a year um, based on eight weeks, okay? So how do you buy these things? Just very, very, very quickly, because I don't want to turn this into, to, into a tutorial. Um, all you have to do is go to Treasury Direct and click on Buy Direct. So when you click on buy direct, you're then taken to this screen. I just zoomed in and got rid of my account number so I don't have to keep blocking it. Uh, but basically you would click on bills and then you'd go down here and click submit. Once you click submit, you are then taken to this page where you can then see the auction date and the issue date. Uh, the auction date is when the rate is established. The issue date is when you actually get those securities. So you have anywhere from four week, eight week, 13 week, 17 week, 26 week, 52 week. And there you go. Okay, so that's how you buy treasury bills very quickly through Treasury Direct. You can also do this through Schwab. You can also do this through your broker. Um, all you have to do is watch the, this video that's on the screen right now. Okay, so the fifth and final reason why I bought 50 grand worth of T-bills is because they have a better yield than a savings account. Uh, so remember, the T-bills that I bought are probably going to end up somewhere in the neighborhood of 4.6 to 4.7% APY. Um, but what you'll see here is this is a screenshot of my Capital One 360 performance uh, savings account. You can see that I'm earning 3.3%. So I'm earning about... Uh, 140 basis points more or 1.4% more uh, with the T-bills that I am with a savings account. Uh, 
So I just wanted to end this with my thoughts, so let's get into it. So T-bills, they're a great way to get into an asset risk-free, especially if you're sitting on a bunch of cash right now. So if you have a bunch of cash, you don't really trust the market, you don't want to stuff it into, you know, crypto, gold, you know, whatever you may be investing in, um, and you don't want to, and you want to have a store of value or preservation of value while not getting destroyed by inflation. Uh, that's the other thing I'm going to talk about. You're still losing money to inflation uh, by buying these things. So even if you're getting, you know, four or five percent, inflation is still sitting at six or seven percent. The last time I checked, so savers are still losers. Um, however, you're 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 narrowing that discrepancy between your high yield savings account, which may be. 3.3 to let's say 4% 4, 4 maybe right now at the time of this recording um, versus inflation, which is six or seven. So at least you're getting a little bit closer to that inflation number, uh, which is why I buy I bonds anyway, uh, which I'll talk about in a different video. Um, but with these bonds is or these bills, excuse me, is that it's a risk-free rate. So there's literally no risk unless the government were to default tomorrow or within the duration of that bill, you know, max of 52 weeks if it's a T-bill. So there, it's a risk-free rate. Um, it's a lot of tax advantages, which we talked about in the video. Um, and then also, it's just a good way to squirrel away some money if you know you're a spender, okay? So if you have all this money sitting in your savings account, um, and you're like, oh, you know, I'm going to buy the next shiny thing just because I have money, money sitting there. Um, you know, this could be a good way to lock it up for, you know, a couple months, you know, a couple weeks, a couple whatever. Okay. Anywhere from four weeks to 52 weeks. So um, you're not going to get rich off this, but at the same time, it's a good tool to have in your toolbox. And again, you're getting about almost one and a half percent more than you would in your traditional savings account. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, I socked away 50 grand for eight weeks. You know, it's no big deal. This was part of my war chest anyway. It's money just sitting in that capital uh Capital One 360 savings account anyway. So hopefully you got value from this. Go check out my other video if you don't know how to buy these things. And thank you for sitting through today's sponsor. I appreciate it. And as always, have a prosperous day. Okay, let's hear it. You can make fun of me. I bought T-bills. Come on, Marco, my grandma bought T-bills. My grandpa bought T-bills. I get it. I'm all ears. Uh, I could take it. Uh, all joking aside, I'm parking this just for a couple months uh, just to reevaluate. Um, I'm still dollar cost averaging. Uh, I'm still saving up a little bit for a little real estate fund I got going on the side. Um, this is probably going to be part of that. So it just we're just chilling, guys. It's a two month T bill. Relax. No need to no need to destroy me in the comments. My grandma bought T bills. Yeah, well, your grandma's awesome. Okay. <laughs>